It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, let's move on to Raddy's question. Raddy says, I was on track until the market tanked, Brian. Mm -hmm. Even saving 25%, I'm still negative for the year. How long does it usually take to recover from a recession? This is kind of a interesting time for a lot of people, so I think that this is a good thing to speak to right now. Yeah, I think a lot of people are probably feeling this mm-hmm. way. I even got a text from a client last night saying, "Hey, um, about time we have a meeting to kind of you know just talk about strategy, figure things out. I just want to make sure we're still on track." Yeah, I looked at my Roth the other day. I hadn't in a while, and I was like, "Ooh, okay." Yeah, I mean, like, it, it, it never where we're feels at. good. That's mm-hmm. why I always first first lesson here. When we, if you're young enough that this is your first true downturn, because really the last time we now look, you could say the pandemic, but that was such a fast turnaround recovery when the market lost that 35. percent If you if you blinked or took a nap, you you kind of didn't didn't feel that completely. This one seems a little more prolonged, more like what we experienced historically when you had like the Great Recession of 2008. So I always tell people. Bank up how you're feeling right now, because this is the type of skill set. If you can learn how to harness how you react emotionally and then apply that to your analytics and your financial life, you this is worth its weight in gold. This is experience that will create value in your life. But you're trying to figure out how long does this take to recover? And remember, we talk about markets. If you need a visual, if you're a visual learner, you are walking up a big mountain, a huge mountain that you're never going to get to the top of with a yo-yo. So you're going up and down, up and down, but over the long term you're going to higher and higher ground. But that that sounds great when you're not experiencing a bear market, but a lot of you are like, okay, I hear that. That's why I stayed the course, but now I've watched my portfolio drop 20%. What, what, how long is this going to take to fix? We know, look, when you lose 20% mathematically you have to make 25% to get it back. But this is why we diversify, because if you lose 50%, it takes 100% to make that back. So mathematics is the you know, the more you lose, the harder it is to come back from. So this is right. why we spread our assets out to get diversification, the power of that, because you hopefully can recover faster, because markets do fortunately recover in a very fast way. It's called a V-shaped recovery. And we know from some, we don't have this, this is where eventually we're going to have the ability to whip stuff up on the screen when we do these live <laughs> Q&As. But I know these, fortunately I know this from just covering this so much, is that when we hit the bottom of this bear market, nobody knows when that is yet, but when we do hit that very bottom day, it will happen, just like it happened in March of 2009, Was and nobody knew that, hey, that day, like, I think it was like March 8th or 9th, nobody knew that was the bottom day. Just like in November of 2002, nobody knew that was the bottom trading day. But here's what we do know. If you look at this, within the first year, historically, the market makes and recovers 40% of of the down losses. Yeah, that's I mean, it's a 40% return from the bottom. And by the way, the first month is like 15% historically. So this is one of the things why you can't time it is because it will turn really quick. And in our own research of, of watching clients and other things, depending upon your asset allocation, how much risk you're taking... But typically, our clients have re- recovered, if we looked at past downturns, they had recovered within two to three years. Mm-hmm. So it's a, meaning they were, had recovered all the money that was lost and were back to making more. And it could be as fast as 1.7 years. It really depends upon how much you lost on the downside. Did you stay the course? And then were you piling money into this, meaning that you felt like you were facing volatility, but you'd always be buying into this process can actually really cut the edge off of how much it's hurting you. Yeah, I so think take it's advantage easy of those tools. to like look at the scary downturn and think, oh, maybe I should hold off uh, my investing right now. And it's actually the opposite, especially for people who are younger or earlier on their journey. So that was a really good explanation. Yeah, I mean, I always tell the contrarian side of me, and now this is not a perfect thing, but it's something just to keep in the back of your mind. What feels safe in the long term can be risky. What feels risky in the long term might actually be safe for your (laughs) long-term wealth-building journey. Pay attention to those things because these are, like I said, downturns. is It's really hardening the steel of your resolve on your wealth-building journey. Yeah. Thanks so much for your question, Raddy. That was a good one. I know it's a weird time. So hopefully that kind of helps you feel more certain about where you are in your financial journey.